Hi everyone and welcome to Home Reno Collectibles, where today we're going to be taking a look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Superman the Infected, and this is part of the Collector Build The Merciless Wave. Now if you don't know what this storyline is that he comes from, and you're thinking, well why is he infected? Uh, he's infected with the uh, Joker toxin from the Batman Who Laughs, basically. It was from the Batman uh, Superman storyline. Uh, so kind of like end of 2019, I think it was. Um, but he wasn't actually affected by the Batman Who Laughs. Uh, he infected himself uh, with the toxin uh, to kind of infiltrate and go undercover. It's a really awesome look for Superman, especially if we bring the box around. Look at that artwork. Now, this artwork is very much what this design uh, of the figure was based on. You can see how because of all of the red around here, it's really uh, giving that kind of effect to the suit. And they've decided to go for a purple suit, as you can see there in the box. You'll see it more clearly in a second. But he does have a regular blue suit. It is just the normal Superman of the comic uh, at that time. So this kind of aura, this purple aura, it really does make him look evil. Makes him kind of look bizarre, to be honest. Um, but that is not actually how the suit looks in the comics. In a few panels, yes, but it should be blue. Do want to say, though, I definitely prefer it in purple. Again, just with that head sculpt kind of makes him look evil. And I really, really do like that. So if anyone really doesn't like it because of comic book accuracy, fair enough. But I don't think that is a big deal. I definitely think it looks way better in purple and really just looks awesome as, in general, you know, an evil infected Superman. And it does at least stay accurate to some of the comic panels. So that is fine. Let's go ahead and uh, get this thing open and take a closer look. Now, as always with multiverse figures, we do get a stand and a collector card of the artwork on the back of the box inside the box right here. You do have to tear the box apart to get to them because they're on there as like a kind of blister card, uh, but really, really nice. And here's Superman out of the packaging and standing just over seven inches tall. This thing looks amazing and it's definitely one of the best Superman figures out there on the market from any retailer. This thing looks so good. It has that definite Bizarro vibe, even more so now out of the box because of that, you know, light purple suit and with the kind of evil looking face. But it looks so incredible. I do have to point out one major flaw in this. I was looking at him and I was thinking, you know, the the paint on the face doesn't quite match up with the neck there because of the shading that they've used. And I was going to use that as a talking point. And then I looked around the back and I was like, well, that's a really weird head mold. This is actually not how it's molded. As you can see in there, the hair is actually folded under. And if we take the head off, yeah, just like that, you can see the inside here, it's been put on and the hair has actually been pushed inside his own head so yeah give me a second and i'll see if i can sort that out and put it back on the figure and there we go so i uh got my finger under there and pulled the hair down and then popped it back on you can see it is still kind of going under but if i squeeze it i can kind of manipulate it out a little bit and uh, with it now being over the top of the neck you know i can always just push his head up and it'll just put it back into the right shape. Hopefully that doesn't happen to many other people's. It's definitely a first for me. But uh, yeah, there we go. That looks so much better. So as I was talking about the color, um, it's amazing. The red tone that they've put around the mouth and fading through uh, the rest of the face. Like the uh, lipstick there has been kind of smeared. And I do love the uh, the dark eyes. And if we look really closely, you can see the lines like the infected veins coming from those eyes, which is amazing. And again, look at that hair sculpt. The loose uh, hair strand on the front is actually sculpted in and is looking beautiful. Uh, the head is looking very red. I guess he's kind of, you know, scowling and menacing. His, his face is going to be red. But then jump straight down to the neck and it is a bit of a jarring difference there with how uh you know pale that neck is it's not really a problem at all um you don't really notice it all that much but it is just a little bit jarring especially at the ears i think the red maybe shouldn't have gone quite as far but it looks fine he does come as well as the stand that i've got him on uh with 
some hands, some extra hand accessories. So he's got a pair of fists. These two open hands are not the same sculpt. This one has more of a, you know, single... Stop looking at his face. Uh, a single finger coming out there from the grip. And then this one is uh, two fingers with the grip and those two a little bit further in. So there's your difference in those hands. It is quite nice that they are different. I'm definitely just going to keep the fists on mine. Uh, the stature of this figure I think is absolutely perfect. The um, the body mold, it definitely does like a re uh, look like a realistic uh, human anatomy. Uh, loving the fact that obviously the pants here are molded, they're not just painted on. That the S is a molded piece that's glued on, it's not just painted on. We have lots of sculpted lines in the detail itself. But then, onto the back. I mean, look at this cape. All tattered and looking gorgeous. It's a very, very thin cape. It has had a little bit of uh, paint rub from the box there, I guess. A little bit of blue on the cape. It does have a nice texture to it. You should be able to see it there. And obviously, it does come from the right place in the suit as well. And it's not even on uh, both sides and stuff. It's a really, really good look. And I love how underneath you can actually see where that costume uh, starts and ends there as well. It just, it's a really, really perfect sculpt. It really is. So we're loving the sculpt. We're loving the size and look of that body. We're loving the paintwork, even though most of the time he's like this, he is actually, you know, just his regular blue self. Um, you know, this does look absolutely fantastic and accurate to the comic panel that they took it, obviously, from. So, comic book accuracy is totally fine. Um, and that head sculpt is incredible. Cape, amazing too. I mean, literally all they have to do is just swap that S backwards and you've got an awesome Bizarro. So, everything so far points to this figure being one of the best that McFarlane Toys has produced. It's absolutely incredible. Let's take a look at the articulation and see if that stands up as well. So the head pivots really, really nicely side to side. You saw how thin the plastic was on that hairpiece, and that really does help you get a lot of articulation because it means even the head itself can kind of flex a little bit. So it looks up on that joint. I'm not going to try pushing it too much because it will pop off, but you can get him looking really far up for some nice flying poses which is really important for a Superman. He can look down, not all that much though, and obviously side to side. At the shoulders here, we do actually have butterfly joints, which is really nice, and they can move out to the side and rotate all the way around. Oh, I just realized that butterfly is actually kind of like a ball joint, so he actually moves up and down at that joint as well as that one. Huh, I didn't even realize that before. That is really cool. Uh, rotation at the upper part of the arm here, and wow, look at that, the molded detail even carries on under there. Wow, that's cool. Double jointed elbows, which move in all the way. And then we've got the rotation and the hinges at the wrist, so it moves up and down, but obviously you can rotate it around and then it moves in and out, just like the ankles. So, we have this uh, double diaphragm moving thingy here, so at the top piece, uh, doesn't really crunch forward at all, but it does move back. You've got the side to side pivot, and the rotation, and then at this bottom piece, that's where you get your crunch, and then it also moves back, and moves side to side, but not as much as the top piece, and obviously that also rotates, so you can move both of them for a more natural look. Uh, only problem is, because the top piece doesn't crunch, um, it's only the bottom piece, it's not really moving a lot to get him looking down much, but again, for those flight poses, for Superman himself, looking up is the most important thing. So, the head being up, and with the torso being up, he can get really, really great fight poses, and that is all that matters for a Superman. You know, he can look down enough to where he's hovering above and looking down on someone. That's all you need. You don't need a super amazing ab crunch, so that's totally fine. Let's move this leg, because that one's still got the stand on it. Um, these uh, do hinder articulation a little bit, as you can see when I'm moving the leg up, it is moving it out to the side, so it's not incredible, but there is movement there. It can move back a little bit, out to the sides, perfectly fine, and obviously rotation, but not as much because this is going to hinder it. But I love the look of that, and obviously, in terms of an action figure, you can't see that there's joints there. So, 
you got to give them props and it looks fantastic and I definitely do uh, prefer that to them being painted on and having incredible articulation especially for a figure uh, a character should I say like Superman that doesn't really need it so then looking at the knees they are double jointed and move quite far then down to the feet uh, they can move eh, back that much up that much they can rotate and then they also have, if you put them the other way around, they can pivot side to side. And then you also have the toe hinge there as well. Overall, this thing is amazing and I absolutely adore it. It's definitely my favorite figure from the Merciless Wave. And as I said, one of my favorite Superman figures ever. Definitely one of the best that you can buy on the market right now. Uh, just absolutely everything about it. The detail in the cape, in the face, and throughout the entire suit. The colouring, it's definitely unique. We don't get very many Bizarros, so I mean, a purple Superman is very few and far between. Uh, the articulation works for the character, especially for uh, the flight poses, etc. It is phenomenal, and I definitely recommend this guy to any Superman fan, especially Batman Who Laughs fans. You know, if you want uh, an infected Justice League display, uh, we're getting them obviously slowly but surely, this is 100% a figure you need in your collection. So thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like. If you want to see more from me, check out the videos on the screen right now and the links to my social media in the description below. And for more DC Multiverse, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.